New York Giants head coaching candidate video. This is one I've been wanting to do for like the last week or so. But first, I wanted to put in the research and stuff like that and actually make a list of people I like the most. So I ranked them from one to seven. It is. We have guys, and this is no particular order Joe Judge, we have Mike McCarthy, Josh McDaniels, Eric Bienemy, Chris Richard, Don Wink, Martindale, and then Matt Rule. So I'll be ranking all those guys, tell you what I think about them, which ones I want the most, which ones I want the least, all that type of stuff. Let me know in the comments who you want. Maybe give uh, give me a ranking of what you guys want in the comments as well. We'll see if we agree. I feel like there's one guy we're not going to agree on already, but we'll see when we get to that. But um, hopefully you guys enjoy this video, and let's get into it. So number one, and this might not be a surprise to some of you based off how I've talked about him in the past, but I have Matt Rule. I'm just going to clarify because someone said this on Twitter before and it made me laugh. I tweeted out this list earlier. Now I'm making a video for it, but someone said, what about Bill Belichick? Yeah, I'll take Bill Belichick at number one if he's there. I just don't think we're getting him. I mean, I hope we do, obviously, but that's like a long shot in my opinion. So Matt Rule, Baylor head coach currently, former Temple head coach, New York Giants offensive assistant in 2012, their Super Bowl year. He's turned around two organizations so far, two programs in college. We talked about Temple. They went from 2-10 and 10 his first year to 10-3 and three his last year. Baylor, they had the incident where all the you know scholarships were taken away and guys didn't want to play there anymore because of some kind of scandal going on. Came in the first year, they went 1-11. and 11. Last year, or this year, 11-3. They lost that game to, uh, I forget who they played now. Was it Georgia? I forget who they played now, honestly. They played a good team the other day, but you know they, they lost like 28-14. They were overmatched the whole time, so it is what it is. Um, it was Georgia. Yeah, they had you know, Jake Fromm, all those guys. Yeah, so they lost to Georgia. I think it was 28-14. They gave up a, they gave a pretty good fight. I mean, the second half, the thing I loved about watching that game from Matt Rule, I was paying close attention to him, he made adjustments in the second half, and I love that. I mean, they weren't taking many shots deep in the first uh, first half of the game. Came out in the second half, made some adjustments, ju adjustments offensively, and they started moving the ball well. So, I mean, there was one particular moment where it was questionable. Matt Rule went for like a fourth and two on like probably Georgia's like 45-yard line. They didn't get it. Um, left tackle got beat, stuff like that. So, I mean, I appreciate his aggressiveness. I like that. I think analytically it's a very smart thing to do. We see a guy in Baltimore, John Harbaugh, do that a lot, and it works to his advantage. So I like when coaches go for it on a fourth and a short. has to be at the right spot of the field, of course. Don't go for it on your own 10-yard line. But, like, you know, in certain situations like that, I could live with it. So... His players in college, they love him. They rave about him and his preparation. Has a really good personality and a command of the team. Great with speeches and motivation. I mean, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube of him giving speeches or just motivational speeches, so go watch them if you haven't yet. Tom Coughlin, I, I did this in my other video. I didn't write down the quote, but Tom Coughlin had a nice like paragraph to say about Matt Rule with his time with the Giants for one year. And the cons for him, so I mean, there's going to be cons for everybody, I think. So there's no NFL head coaching experience already, so that's one bad thing thing so I mean coaching the NFL and coaching um college is different I mean you're you're coaching grown men here and they're you know 28 30 35 years old and man trying to say but you know some people are older obviously and with college guys it's just it's young men but you know in the NFL you have grown men so it's different like can he relate to those guys as well I feel he should I feel he will but it's also a question you have to ask and um you know he's only been with NFL players for one season I talked about that one season with the Giants and some Giants players had nice things to say about him I think one of them might have been Chris Snee, and the other one was like Kevin Booth or something like that. I don't know, but some Giants players had nice things to say about him, so I think he'll be fine with relating to the NFL players instead of college. But I'm interested in Matt Rule for sure. He's gonna want a lot of the, um, you know, the say in personnel moves and stuff like that. So we'll see if John Merrick grants that for him. I think right now, based off reports, he's the Giants' number one choice. We'll see if you know it works out for both of them. I think he meets with Carolina tomorrow, so we'll see how that meeting goes. Maybe he signs there right away. I hope not, but I think he has a meeting with the Giants in like a couple days, so we'll see what happens and see what kind of reports come out with that. Number two, we have Don Wink Martindale from the Baltimore Ravens, the defensive coordinator. He's been coaching since 1986. It started at the collegiate level, eventually got to the NFL, was promoted to defensive coordinator. Um, he was a defensive coordinator first in 2010. That was with the Denver Broncos. They did not have a good year whatsoever. I think that was with Josh McDaniels as well, so they did not have a good year there. And in 2018 2019 was the Ravens defensive coordinator where he's had a lot of success. So in 2018, they were the number one ranked defense in 2019. This year, the number four ranked defense. And even this year, they lost some key players in their front seven like Terrell 
Terrell Suggs, C.J. Mosley, and Zadarius Smith. Um, he was still able to make it work. They had a great secondary this year. They added uh, Earl Thomas. They did lose Eric Weddle as well. That's another guy. So he made up for some of the losses, and they had a great year. Some guys, you know, took the next step. Marlon Humphrey comes to mind as well in the secondary. So I love this guy's personality. He seems relatable. Seems good with the media. So I like that about him. Gives them a defensive head coach for the first time in a long time. I talked about how since I've been a Giants fan, it's always been offensive head coaches, including Tom Coughlin. So this would be the first defensive-minded head coach I would see in the, as a Giants head coach. Um, the Giants, I mean, they have a young, they have a lot of young defensive talent, and a guy like Don Martindale can definitely work with that and help those guys improve. So that's definitely intriguing. And rumor has it that if he were hired as head coach, he would bring the offensive coordinator Joe Brady from LA. LSU to come with him and call plays, of course. So that's very intriguing. We know the success LSU had this year with uh, Joe Burrow, you know, potential number one pick, obviously. So that's great news. And I, I watched a video about Joe Brady. He seems like a good guy. Watched some of the play calling for LSU. He uses a lot of stuff that the um, that the New Orleans Saints use. So that'd be a good offense to replicate, obviously. He has that lovable coach vibe that I kind of have, like Rex Ryan in his early years with the Jets. I mean. For some reason, the Jets players just loved Rex Ryan his first few years there in New York. I mean, eventually, a personality like that just gets old and you move on. But, like, the early years of Rex Ryan, he was definitely a good coach and, you know, a defensive mind, obviously. I don't think this guy is as goofy as Rex Ryan, but he's up there, I guess. I mean, it kind of just gave you that vibe. Um, and he could be argued as the best defensive coordinator in football. So, I mean, that's a great thing as well. Um, didn't put any cons here for some reason, but I mean, you can say he hasn't been a head coach yet at any level, so that's definitely something you have to worry about, but a lot of people think he's ready for it. I think he'd be a good candidate. I love this guy's attitude and just his charisma and what he brings to the table, so I would definitely take him as my number two candidate. So number three, and this is the one I think we're going to disagree on, it's Josh McDaniels, and a lot of you don't like him, especially some responses I saw on Twitter. Some of you put him last, which I find funny, but still, it's your own opinion, so I get it. He's 43 years old. He's been the Patriots offensive coordinator from 06 to 08, then came back after his you know coaching stint and won uh, one year as offensive coordinator for the Rams. He was the um, head coach of the Broncos in 20, uh, 2009, 2010, got off to a great start with the Broncos. Didn't end so well, obviously, but the beginning was good. And um, finished up with the Patriots from 2012 to present day. Seems like he's not going to return. I feel like he's ready for a head coaching job this time. We know he took that job with the Colts two years ago. Backed out the last second. I don't know if it was revenge for the deflate gate stuff with the Colts, but I have no idea. I'm not getting into that. So... The thing about him, they st the Patriots offense still ranked 15th in offensive yards. You know, with the struggling, you know, talent-wise, they they've had on that team. I mean, they lost Rob Gronkowski. Their best receiver by far was Edelman. They had some rookies in there. They had Jacoby Myers and Keel Harry. Who else is like a reliable receiver for this? I mean, they had Muhammad Sanu for half a year. So I mean, this team did not have many good receivers this year, but they found ways to move the ball. They were 15th in yards and 7th in points. I mean, that's really good, and it shows you the creativity that Josh McDaniels gives you offensively. I mean, I know we think the Patriots have a stigma. They're the Patriots. We get it, but like... The offensive line was not good. Um, if you watched them play, their offensive line was the worst Patriots offensive line I might have seen in my lifetime since being a football fan. And their offensive weapons were not that good outside of Edelman. So, I mean, he did a lot with very little, in my opinion. So, that's definitely very impressive. Very creative uh, play caller. I've said it. I mean, you know, we see him with the trick plays sometimes. He's very good with screen plays. We've seen plays where, like, you know, Brady throws to, to Edelman. Edelman will throw it to a different receiver. We see running backs throwing the ball sometimes. A bunch of crazy, crazy stuff. He has a lot of tricks in his bag, and I like that for sure. It just helps when your offense is struggling. He's the type of guy that knows how to make adjustments. We see it all the time. The Patriots will like put their running back against the linebacker and avoid that, you know, and uh, use that mismatch. I mean, imagine Josh McDaniels with a Saquon Barkley type talent. He'll know how to use him. That was one of my things with Pat Shermer. I did not like how he used Saquon Barkley, but a guy like Josh McDaniels would definitely know how to use him and match him up in the right places. I mean, I think he would get the best out of Saquon Barkley, honestly. So that's exciting. Um, he should have respect from the players after winning three Super Bowls and six appearances with the Patriots. I know his time in Denver did not go so well, but I really do think he learned from that experience this guy I mean one of the former players I listened to an interview I forget who the player was said Josh McDaniels was the best coach he's had for preparation but he just did not know how to motivate guys and was not good with the personal side of things so I think once he improves with that side of it like he gets half of it he he understands how to game plan 
and make adjustments and call plays better than most people. It was just the personal and relationship stuff he was not too good at, but hopefully he fixed that. I know the guy can kind of be a D-bag sometimes, but I really hope he fixed that. Um, as I said before, he can get the most out of his players, can call trick plays to ignite his offense, and the cons. So he failed as a head coach in Denver. It started off great. I think they started off like 5-0, and 6-0 and his first year. Then they went like 3-9 and in Denver in 2010. He got fired, forced some guys out of town. I think Brandon Marshall, Jake Cutler. So, I mean, yeah, it didn't go so well. I think he was one of the guys who wanted to draft Tim Tebow. We know how that went. It worked for like half a year or maybe one full season. But after that, it wasn't really a good pick. Um and can he hire the right defensive coordinator to help this young defense? So there is definitely rumors going around that he could hire Joe Judge to be the defensive coordinator. And Joe Judge is a guy we'll get to later, who's another head coaching candidate for this team. He's uh, being interviewed by the Giants for their head coaching job. But Josh McDaniels, when he was going to go to Indianapolis, had Joe Judge on his staff. So we'll see if Josh McDaniels leaves, if he takes Joe Judge once again. We'll see how that works. I feel like if you have Josh McDaniels as your head coach slash OC, and then you have Joe Judge as defensive coordinator, it's not that bad, honestly. And maybe we see a scenario where Bill Belichick is GM or something crazy like that. I would love that, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. But that would be cool. So, look, I know we're going to disagree on Josh McDaniels for the most part, but I laid out my reasoning for him. I think he's a very good offensive mind, and I think he's going to learn from his mistakes um, from his previous job in Denver. I think he'll be much better the second time around. Number four on my list is Chris Richard, 40 years old, Seahawks defensive coordinator from 2015 to 2017, and has been the Dallas Cowboys defensive backs coach for the last two years. So his rankings defensively in Seattle, I know that most of it is Pete Carroll calling the plays and all that type of stuff. But Chris Richard definitely worked with these guys in practice. And there was a practice video I watched about Chris Richard that made me fall in love with him, honestly. Like, he was so good with teaching the players and like I know it's only one five minute video I'll post the um links in the description for the videos I watched on some of these guys that really like made me decide about them and the video for Chris Richard was great he seemed like such a high energy guy and the players loved him so I'll post that video for you guys in the uh, description so in 2015 they were second in yards per game allowed I know this was a great defense Seattle had and stuff like that this was like you know, towards the end, I guess, of the Legion of Boom, I think 2015 they went to the snow. 2014 they went to the Super Bowl, but they still had a great defense in 2015. They were fifth in yards per game allowed in 2016. and 2017, they were 11th. So after that huge drop-off to 11, he was fired by Pete Carroll. And I read an article, and Pete Carroll and him just did not agree on some things. And Pete Carroll said he was being too aggressive. And, I mean, he worked with Pete Carroll back at USC. So those guys go way back. It was kind of surprising to see him get fired from the Seahawks. But still, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And he could be our treasure right here. So he brings great energy and leadership skills. I talked about that. He's good in interviews as well. Seems like a great teacher based off the videos I watched at practice. He's a former player, so he should get respect from his guys. A former third-round pick. Pick. He only played for four seasons, I believe it was, but still a former player, a former third round pick. That should give you some respect right there. And he seems like the type of coach that guys would love to play for. So the cons, of course, I mean, I don't know who he's going to bring in as an offensive coordinator. I have no idea, honestly. And he has no head coaching experience. So that's the bad stuff. I mean, there's a lot to like about Chris Richard defensively. I think he's the type of guy, especially with his being a secondary coach and stuff like that, he would get the most out of guys like DeAndre Baker, Julian Love, maybe Corey Ballantyne and guys like that. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with him. But, I mean, I'm, this is a guy that I'm very intrigued by. I think he'd be a very good head coach one day. I don't know if this is the right situation for him, but it really depends who they bring in as offensive coordinator. I mean, that would really be the um, the thing for me because at, at the end of the day, the most important thing for the Giants is developing Daniel Jones, and that might not be a thing Chris Richard is familiar with or knows how to do. So it really depends who he brings in as offensive coordinator. But defensively, I think Chris Richard can definitely get the most out of his guys, so I put him at number four on my list. Number five, I have Mike McCarthy, 56 years old. I think we're all familiar with him. He was a longtime Packers head coach, Saints offensive coordinator from uh, 2000 to 2004, and 49ers offensive coordinator in 2005, and of course coached the Packers from 06 to the middle of 2018. So the good news, he's a Super Bowl winning head coach, a career record of 125, 77, and 2. Spent um, the off year, like basically he was unemployed this year, but he spent basically his whole time just looking back at his mistakes. And, you know, they made a video about it. I'm sure most of you saw it and trying to develop some new ideas and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we'll see if Mike McCarthy reinvents himself as a coach. I don't completely buy into that, but we'll see. It's definitely possible. That's why I put him fifth and not lower. 
Um, you know, he's a guy who can develop Daniel Jones like he did with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is just a very naturally talented guy, but I'm sure Mike McCarthy had some influence on the player he is today. They had six NFC North titles in 13 seasons, a 10-8 and playoff record. Now, obviously, for cons, I have a lot. And the thing that I like about McCarthy, one of the only things I like about him, is that he's experienced, he's been there before, and he took a year off. I mean, sometimes it's good to take a year off instead of jumping back into it. You don't learn from your mistakes that way. Because, you know, once you get fired, I mean, you know, basically by late February, early March, you're just, you know, already scouting college players and stuff like that. You really don't have a mental break. But this guy had a full year, really over a full year, to look at what he's done wrong in the past and, and possibly, as I said, reinvent himself as a coach, which is exciting. But he's definitely had a long enough track record of stuff I don't like from him to not make him higher on this list for me. So the cons... I think he underachieved with Favre for the last two years of his career, or not career, but as a as a Packer and prime Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he had one Super Bowl. I know they won six NFC titles in his uh, 13 seasons, but at the same time, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is such a crazy talent. They had good teams there offensively, especially their defense some years was better than others. I mean, their defense in the middle of this decade has not been great, but like, you know, the early 2010s, they had a great defense. The late 2000s, they had a great defense as well. I think he underachieved with that team, honestly. His play calling and decision making, I think, is average and best. I'm not really a fan of some of the play calls he has and stuff like that. Um, it comes from the same system as Ben McAdoo, so we might see some of the similar play calling ideas that McAdoo had, and of course I was not a big fan of that as well, because McAdoo used to be a quarterback's coach for Green Bay, and when he came over from Green Bay to the Giants to be the offensive coordinator, you know, he was under Mike McCarthy, obviously, so... Here's a concerning thing. In 2018, I actually tweeted this the other day. In 2018, the Packers were 7-8-1. Their defensive rank was 18th in the league. And in 2019, this year, they were 13-3 and with a new head coach, Matt LaFleur. And they were also ranked 18th in defense. So Mike McCarthy, we know, is an offensive coach. They had the same ranked defense both years, but somehow Matt LaFleur got six more wins out of his team than Mike McCarthy did. I feel like that's saying something. And, you know, they get a first-round bye with Matt LaFleur in his first year as a 39-year-old head coach, which is just definitely impressive and it might say something about Mike McCarthy in not so good of a way he underused Aaron Jones he had a career year this year with Matt LaFleur calling plays he had a lot more rushing attempts than he ever ever has before his efficiency went down a little bit I mean I think he went down from like 5.1 yards per carry to like 4.6 but still he got the most out of his running back I like that a lot um Matt LaFleur I'm talking about not Mike McCarthy Mike McCarthy has underutilized Aaron Jones for two years now um and I think his his success has been attributed to great rosters. There's some coaches. I mean, I just tweeted this the other day as well, how Bill O'Brien is just a guy who has great rosters. I don't think he's that good of a coach, honestly. I don't see him make too many adjustments or have – great play calls and stuff like that. I think a lot of that relies on Deshaun Watson's shoulders and stuff like that, but I just don't think Mike McCarthy's as good as people make him out, to be honest. There's a lot of cases I have against him. There was a great video posted about him. I posted that on Twitter as well, but I'll put that in the description talking about you know some of the mistakes he made in a game against New England last year. And Of course, when you're playing the Patriots, you're going to bring your A game as a coach, and Mike McCarthy made some mistakes in that game, so I'll put that in the description and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I'm not really totally on board with Mike McCarthy I mean I'd be a little annoyed if they hired him honestly I'd be the first four guys I'd be pretty happy with but after this I'd kind of be like no this is not the direction I want to go I don't think Mike McCarthy would be right for this team right now look maybe he's a great coach coming back from his year off and learning from his mistakes but people don't change like that suddenly it's just you know you're going to go back to your old ways eventually it would be nice at first if you know they started off on a nice winning streak next year but eventually you know it always you always go back to your to what you know best and stuff like that so I'm not fully on board with McCarthy I guess it wouldn't be the end of the world if they hired him but right now it seems like he might go to Dallas so we'll see how it plays out in the next few weeks but um he's definitely in play for the Giants as well so that's why I put him in number five Number six, I have Eric Bieniemy, and some of you had a problem with this ranking on Twitter as well. I mean, guys thought I should have had him higher, but I have my reason against him. I'll get into that later. Um, so Chiefs offensive coordinator the last two years, Chiefs running back coach from 2013 to 2017, Colorado offensive coordinator from 2011-2012, and Vikings running back coach from 06 to 2010. Did some stuff before that, but that was in college and stuff, so I really didn't want to get too much into it. Andy Reid, the current head coach of the, the Chiefs, speaks very highly of him, says he's a big fan, doesn't want to lose Eric Bieniemy, but that's probably going to be the outcome because some teams are going to be interested in him, obviously. 
had a nine-year career as a running back and a punt returner. Um, should have some respect from his players for that. He had a good college career at Colorado as well, if, uh, if I'm thinking correctly. I'm pretty sure he did. Previous um, Andy Reid offensive coordinators went on to be head coaches. We talk about Matt Nagy for the Bears and Doug Peterson with the Eagles. And I think Doug Peterson's done a nice job. Of course, won a Super Bowl already. Matt Nagy's had his ups and downs for sure. But, you know, I guess Matt Nagy's not too bad of a coach. Seems like a very likable guy and is big on preparation. So you love that. I mean... Look, I know Andy Reid hasn't won the big game yet, but he's honestly a very good head coach, of course, a great play caller and stuff like that. So, you know, learning under a guy like that since, what, 2000 and uh, whatever, it's been 20, 2013, it's very good. I mean, you know, Andy Reid's a great mind, in my opinion, so, I mean, that would be a great guy to learn under. And the cons for him, I think this is the thing that, that gets me with Eric Bieniemy. He seems like too much of a good guy. I just... It could work. Don't get me wrong. If Eric Bieniemy one day becomes a great head coach, I would not be shocked by it. But really, if you ask me, I think he's too nice. And I'm like, it's it's a bad thing to say, but like with your head coach, there should be a level of like, this is my head coach, not my friend. And I feel like he comes off as too much of a friend. I mean, I could be wrong about this. I mean, I've never seen the guy raise his voice and stuff like that, but he has a very, like, mellow and just, like, chill attitude about everything. So I don't know if he's head coach material, honestly. I don't know if he knows how to command the locker room and stuff like that. I could be totally wrong. I've never been in a locker room with Eric Bieniemy before, but that's the impression I get based off watching his interviews and stuff. But he's good with the media. He's a likable guy, it seems like. Just the one problem I have is, is, you know, can he command the locker room? And if things start to go south quickly for him, can he regain the control of his players? I mean, I really don't know. I mean, I feel like if he's a coach and things start to go downhill quickly, can he fix it? I just don't know if he can do that. I don't know if he's the right guy for the job there. So if he gets a job and things go smoothly, I think he'll be fine. But if things start to go south for him quickly, I don't know if he's the type of guy that can just, you know, get his guys back together and get them playing well I really don't know it might spiral out of control so that's my concern I don't think the Giants want that obviously we saw it happen with Ben McAdoo they had a nice first year with him but the second year spiraled out of control and stuff like that so I'm not saying Eric Bieniemy's personality is anywhere near Ben McAdoo but we've seen it happen before I don't think John Mara and all the you know ownership wants to go down that road again so look maybe they hire him it would not surprise me Andy Reid thinks he should be a great head coach one day and that's definitely more than my opinion but you know if I had to rank these guys I'm putting him six and you know it's probably not the right thing to do but based off what I saw I have to put him six I'm sorry but I still think he could be a good head coach one day it would not surprise me it's just the whole losing the locker room one day and and having the um you know players respect you as a coach and not like a friend so that that's why Lastly, we have Joe Judge, who's only 38 years old, a special teams coach for the Patriots from 2015 to 2019. He was given the role of the wide receivers coach in 2019, was a special teams assistant for Alabama in 2012 as well. So, look, I mean, the Patriots have one of the best special teams year after year, and we've definitely seen it recently, especially this year. They were unbelievable this year. So that's definitely bodes well for Joe Judge, but how much of that credit should go to Bill Belichick? That's the main question there. I mean, I'm sure Joe Judge does a great job with coaching in general, but I'm sure Bill Belichick does a lot as well. Um, Bill Belichick called him an excellent coach. You like hearing that. He's currently working on his PhD in education, so I honestly don't know how you how you're an NFL coach and work on a PhD at the same time. I just that's a crazy commitment right there. So this guy's probably smart as hell. That's definitely a a pro right there for you. His playing career was uh, Mississippi State from 2000 to 2004. Didn't it didn't give a position. I don't know why. I mean both websites I, I looked at did not give me a position of where he played, but in high school he played safety and quarterback. So that's definitely probably one of the positions he played in college. Maybe he was a quarterback, I don't know. He made academic honor roll and made the Dean's list at Mississippi State, which is definitely great. I talked about it before. Very smart guy. And um I did mention this before as well. He was going to join Josh McDaniels in Indianapolis with the Colts a couple years ago. So you could tell Josh McDaniels likes this guy. Belichick likes this guy. So you like hearing that. The cons, no head coaching experience at any level. So that's definitely not good. And only 38 years old, jumping from an, a special teams coach to a head coach of the New York Giants might be a bit overwhelming for him. So that's the one concern I have right there, along with the no head coaching experience. So We've seen it before. I think John Harbaugh went from special teams uh, coordinator to head coach, and you know that worked out great for Baltimore, obviously. So it could happen. It's not like shocking or anything like that. But Joe Judge, I feel like, would need some good assistance around him. I don't know who he would bring. He's obviously not going to bring Josh McDaniels as like his offensive coordinator. It would be the other way around. I think McDaniels would be the guy to be the head coach, and Joe Judge would be the coordinator. So 
I don't know how it's going to work, honestly. I would be very, very shocked if Judge got the job as the head coach, but I guess anything could happen with the Giants. But I feel like maybe they brought him in just to maybe get more of a feel for him and Josh McDaniels together. I don't think this was like an individual interview for Joe Judge. It was technically. I mean, he went in by himself, but I feel they wanted to get a, a feel for both of those guys and maybe have McDaniels and Joe Judge work together. I don't know what the Giants' plan is, obviously, but it's just speculation at this point. So being 38 and given this job, I feel like it's pretty overwhelming, especially for a franchise that's been in a very bad place the last three years or even more than three years now. But um, we'll see. I mean, it would just very, it very much shock me, though, if Joe Judge got this job. But, yeah, as I said, anything can happen. So that's it for this list. Um, if Bill Belichick is actually going to interview with the Giants, then push him to number one and everyone else gets bumped down one spot. But, I once, once again, I don't see it happening. It would be great. I think if there's, you know, if Belichick were to coach anywhere else, I think it would be the Giants. I don't think he would coach anywhere else, honestly. It's either the Giants or the Patriots, so that definitely is a good news for us, but we'll see. It's definitely a long shot, in my opinion, so we'll see what happens. So, I mean, let me know what you guys think about coach rankings and, you know, tell me how you would rank it. I'm sure my rankings aren't perfect, but that's just my opinion, obviously. So I'm sure most of the time we'll disagree on the enemy and Josh McDaniels. That'll be the main thing, but I like McDaniels. I don't know. I mean, there's something about him. I feel like he'll get this right the second time around. I think his offensive mind is great, and he'll get the most out of Jones and Barkley and guys like that. So the Giants have a very talented offense, and why not get one of the best play callers in football to be your head coach? And, I mean, I know there's a personality thing to it as well, which might not be good news for Josh McDaniels, but as I said, I think he'll do, he'll do much better this time around. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you next time. I'll have some college prospect videos out soon, hopefully. I don't know when exactly. But I'm definitely looking in those guys and I'll definitely have some videos about the Giants and, you know, their draft coming up and stuff like that. So hopefully you guys uh, tune in for that and thank you for watching.